Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at two new cases that are actually very, very similar from Cooler Master, and that is the MB520 Master Box 520. Now they are essentially very, very similar with only a minor change to the front in that the black one that I have here, which does come in black or white and is 119.99 of your great British beer tokens. This one has a tempered glass front. The one on the uh, left hand side, which is the white one, but does come in black also has a mesh front. Both have tempered glass side panels. Oh, this one is five pounds cheaper. It's £104.99. No, £115.99, £114.99, yeah, £115, 120 quid. that's how much they cost. They both come with three RGB fans in the front and one RGB fan in uh, the rear, or rather this one doesn't, weirdly, not quite sure what happened there, I think they must have missed it, because the £5, anyway, so, three RGB fans in the front. They uh, both have a hub in the back for the fans and the RGB. You can control the RGB from your motherboard if you wish, but you can also use the click button on the front. Now I'm straight away going to get straight into the review because you can go through lots of modes that it has. I haven't worked out how, <coughs> how not to sneeze on camera. <coughs> I do apologise. Um, I haven't worked out how to make static colours, which has driven me nuts. I've tried little taps, I've tried long taps, which I will admit, if you hold the button down, it does turn the lights off completely, which will appease those of you out there that hate RGB. But anyway, uh, so yes, um, we have uh, no static lighting, which I found rather disappointing. Uh, but. Let's move on and have a look what's going on in, around and uh, upside down the case. Now I normally start at the top and the front, but we're actually gonna go straight round to the back. Now you can see the white one over here, which is the mesh one, doesn't come with the rear fan. Now I'm going to assume the reason why it doesn't have a rear fan is because it's the white model. I think if you uh, get the white tempered glass, it won't come with a fan in the back the only reason I can think about it because some brands charge you a little bit extra for the white. So the fact I've got white and the mesh makes things a little bit more complicated. Uh, but anyway, so um, they both do have uh, three fans in the front as I have said. There's a USB-C on the top and a USB um, 3.2 as well. Power and then the other button you've got is the one that you have to smash. Um, for changing the RGB. Now, the reason why I've been a bit aggressive by turning it around is just so that we can get a really good, easy view of that top panel. Now you can see you've got offset 120 millimeter fans uh, mounts down here, and you could get a 360 up there, nice and easy. And you can also get 140 fans in there. You won't be able to get three in there in total, but you can get a pair in there. But something else that you can do, and another reason for me doing it this way, is we can take a couple of screws off on this side and remove the top panel, basically, uh, which means it's going to make life easier for your 360 millimeter radiators, fitting AIOs, um, and there you have it, really nice, really easy, super slick, and a really nice touch. I think you will uh, agree. So when we move round to the back, there are two thumb screws, top and bottom, with captive nuts, meaning that they don't fall out. Annoyingly, on the other side, and I have removed it already, this one up here for the other side panel isn't captive, and it just falls off. I can't understand why you'd have them on one side and then not on the other. So. Uh, round the back, we have the uh, hub for the uh, other fans that we have. And uh, I do just want to show you something because this really annoyed me. Uh, the fan in the rear, I couldn't get it to go up the back over here. I'm just going to do it just to show you. So I couldn't get it to go up the back up here and then come back round to the CPU header, um, which I know some of you are gonna go, well, I would plug it in down here. I actually don't like having my cables visible over here. 
So I always stick mine round the back and then back over for the CPU. But even more annoyingly, this doesn't fit over to the hub over here, which has already got fans plugged in. So I don't think this cable length is long enough. And I would just implore all of you, if you have your rear fan over here, don't be plugging it in over here. Loads of motherboards are stopping to put fan headers here. I can understand it if you go for the one up the top, if you've got one by the eight pin, but even then I would pull the cable back through, poke it just up so you can't see the cables. So I genuinely don't understand why Kuna Master did this. So this really annoys me and kind of shows me that they've not really built it properly or they've just got people that are shoving them down there, which I'm not being funny. Look, I'm going to put it in down here on this header and it looks horrible. Look, it's just not nice. Zoom in, Tom, they can't see it. It's just not pretty. Get it under the light. It's just not nice. See, look, cable, not nice. Blech, shouldn't be there. Please, Cooler Master, make it longer. Please, come on, you're better than this. Anyway, back round the back. So, round the back, down the bottom here, I am uh, very carefully using it as a cable holder, but you can put two 3.5 inch hard drives down the bottom should you wish. They come with little plastic clips that you stick on the uh, bottom or on the side of your hard drives and they go in there. You've got a little bit of room here because you can have a radiator in the front, but there's not a great deal of room for cables otherwise. I, like I said, that's why I've been shoving cables in here because it then doesn't fall through to the front where you can see it. Um, you do need to plug a SATA in to be able to power the RGBs, which goes up here. And there is a 3.5, 3.5, a three pin fan header uh, that comes off of the hub up here that you need to plug in. And that's how you can monitor and control the fan speeds. Come on, Tommy, you can plug that in. Uh, so round the front, tempered glass here. This is something that I need to be very clear with you about. It's because you have tempered glass on the front and then you can see those little vents just down the side. That is the only ventilation into the front of the case. So it's pretty much blocked up by that tempered glass. Yep. So yeah, we will cover that in a minute. Thankfully though, they did send me the mesh one as well. And with the mesh one, you get the little vents down the side and you get a big mesh panel down the front. Now where I have a white one, my mesh panel is gray. I don't know why the little vents down the side are not gray also. I don't like the fact that you have white and gray there. You choose a color, put it on both. So if it's black, you have black mesh. If it's white and you want to put gray mesh, put gray mesh or you put white mesh, not both. So that was uh, a minor uh, inconvenience. Other than that, and the fan on the back, the cases appear to be exactly the same. Now, the main chamber for the case, as you can see over here, is rather large and is actually kind of nice, especially when I don't kick things. Uh, so you have the large opening at the front, so you can put a 360 millimeter radiator or all in one in there if you wish. Then you can see you've got mounts at the back, lots of tie downs, lots of things that you can do with cables, uh, mount reservoirs, mount pumps, uh, they have thought about water cooling with this case, despite it being uh, small. Now, what that does mean is if you wanted to, you could put a 360 millimeter radiator in the front and have a 360 millimeter radiator in the roof. So despite its compact size, you could put an awful lot of water cooling in there. And I think if you really wanted to, you could get away with putting uh, a, a small reservoir and a pump underneath here where the 3.5 inch hard drives are. And it's gonna mean that you've still got acres of room for long graphics cards. But if you're going water cooling with that much, you're not gonna have to worry about it because of your water block anyway. So you could get lots and lots of cooling in this case. But for the love of God, don't buy the tempered glass one because uh, it really restricts things as we'll talk about in a minute. And it doesn't matter how many fans you put in the roof, you are gonna need more air coming in the front. I probably should have saved that for later. But anyway, uh, you have some meshing cut into the power supply cover so that you can mount your power supply either way. 
Um, I do normally put mine with the fan pointing upwards. For some strange reason today, it went in pointing down. It doesn't really matter because it makes no difference to power supply, performance or temperatures. Um, and as you can see, it's gobbled everything up. You can put a 180 uh, millimeter, sorry, 180 millimeter. You put a 120 millimeter fan in there comfortably, but overall you have a maximum clearance of 165 millimeters. Uh, so that gives you a really nice, easy uh, way of knowing whether your CPU cooler is going to fit. I think most of you are more than likely going to be on a small 120 tower cooler, which will be fine, or uh, a big meaty AIO and then you can put it in the roof or in the front. Okay then peeps, so performance. Long story short, the uh, as you've heard in the rest of the review, the tempered glass did restrict things and things got toasty. Um, it only just passed our GPU test for a um, thousand RPM case fans and you've obviously got three fans in the front and then that fan in the back and it was just yeah, it needed the, yeah, you just need the extra mesh. Now what I did do with the, um, uh, the white one, it didn't come with that fan, so I actually swapped this black one into the back because to be perfectly honest, I think that case should have come with a fan in the back anyway, whether they like me for it or not. I don't know whether it's because it's white. I cannot find any reference to the differences in reality but I think the mesh should have come with the rear fan no matter what colour it was anyway. So I tested it that way. The, the mesh was just a totally different case. This glass front is uh, fine for looks and it does look very nice, but the meshing down the side just isn't enough. You needed the whole section down the side to have been mesh and maybe even a little bit um, more depth on the front as well, just to allow it to breathe. So uh, for me, what I am saying to you, straight in, nice and easy, is I actually really do like this case. The water cooling possibilities are awesome. The fact that you can get two 360s in it and you're gonna have to get a bit creative with your pump and your reservoir, amazing case. Great price too, but suffocated with the tempered glass. So it's really good that they sent me the one with the mesh because that is definitely the one that you should buy save the little bit of money. Uh, hopefully you'll have a spare case fan at home that you can fit in the back, depending on whether you get the white or the black, because I still don't know whether it's just because it's white, it's not got the fan. Um, but anyway, little rant. You'll be, probably know before I do. Anyway, the, the mesh performs really well. So choose whether you want black, choose whether you want white. And um, I think by the time that you've, with the mesh and you've got AIOs and stuff in there, it's, even if you're running an AIO with a graphics card, it's gonna help your temperatures because of extra flow. Uh, the um, uh, tempered glass, it doesn't matter how many fans you get trying to suck air out, the only way in is through these little vents. And it's just going to get starved, it's going to get warm, it's just being suffocated. So I would very much advise you to avoid the tempered glass, save your money, buy the mesh, and then it's a cracking case. And even better, if you want to have your system grow with you over time and you start upgrading uh, and going on a water cooling journey. Because I think for an entry level water cooling case, the mesh one could be a little bargain. But sadly, if you ever see a review where people are building in this one, it's just gonna get suffocated and the performance just isn't there no matter what graphics card cooler you're running, whether you've got an AIO in there, it's not gonna matter. There's just not enough air getting in the front. Buy the mesh one. Buy the mesh one. Buy the mesh 